Now, nearly 3 million people in the UK use e-cigarettes, but MPs are worried about how it affects people's health in the long term. And now an inquiry is going to be set up to look at the impact on health as well as how effective they are in stopping people from smoking. Joining us now is Professor John Britton, who's director of the UK Centre for Tobacco and Alcohol Studies at the University of Nottingham. Uh, Professor, thank you very much for your time this morning on Breakfast. Uh, we know e-cigarettes have, be have been around for a while. Um, could there be long-term effects we aren't aware of. What are your thoughts on this? It's very likely there will be long-term effects from electronic cigarettes. The products aren't completely safe, but where the important distinction is in the, the relative uh, risk against smoking tobacco. So if you're a cigarette smoker, the long-term risks of tobacco smoking are so massive that it's inconceivable that electronic cigarettes could reproduce them. So any smoker who switches to an electronic cigarette is doing their health a favour. But what we do need to know is whether these products carry any long-term hazard that's avoidable. And for that reason, I welcome the, the new inquiry because I think it's an opportunity to set in place the kinds of observational systems, the, the surveillance we need, to pick up any avoidable health harms early rather than late. Yeah, because you, you mentioned there about the sort of to help people quit and e-cigarettes were used in Public Health England's Stoptober campaign for the first time. Yeah. But interestingly, uh, NICE still doesn't say that they're recommended to help people quit. Is that because there's not enough evidence, do you think? Um, NICE find it difficult to recommend products that don't have a medicines licence. Uh, and so it's a, they operate to different rules. The Empirical evidence is extremely clear. You mentioned we have nearly 3 million users in the UK. 1.5 million of those are ex-smokers. And if you look at smoking prevalence figures for the UK over the last three years, you see a decline which is almost twice as fast as was happening before electronic cigarettes came along. These products are having a huge impact on public health. And the challenge for all of us now is to make sure we harness that benefit while just protecting users against any, any uh, unnecessary or avoidable risk. Do you think we'll, we'll get to a point where, where GPs, you'll go and visit your doctor and they will actually prescribe you an e-cigarette? Well, again, one of the difficulties is that uh, a GP or anybody else can't prescribe uh, a product that isn't licensed as a medicine. Uh, there is one licensed electronic cigarette, but it's never come to market. And the problem is that medicines regulation is so onerous and so unsuited to these products that I can't see uh, decent electronic cigarettes getting like medicines license in the predictable future. And that's another thing that would be very nice if the uh, committee could have a look at, because we need a way to be able to integrate these into health services, despite the fact that the current licensing systems we have don't really work for them. One of the other concerns, Professor, is that it sort of a, offers a gateway into smoking or normalising smoking again, particularly for young people. Is that borne out by the evidence? It's a genuine concern, but the evidence in the UK and around the world is very clear that young people do experiment with these products as they experiment with lots of things. But the numbers that transfer from electronic cigarettes to tobacco smoking is extremely small, and the numbers who transfer to tobacco smoking who would not in any case have become a smoker vanishingly small. So although it's a genuine concern, it's not happening in the UK. What we're seeing is falling prevalence of smoking in young people and falling prevalence of smoking in adults. OK, just one more for clarity, if I can. I mean, e-cigarettes might not contain, you were saying, the same sort of toxic chemicals as cigarettes, but there is still nicotine in there, isn't there? And I, I suppose there are long-term dangers associated with that. The long-term dangers of nicotine use seem to be much the same as the long-term dangers of caffeine and we're all going to go and have a cup of coffee this morning, and I would afford the same amount of concern to long-term use of nicotine. It's not the nicotine that kills, it's the other things in the smoke. OK, thank you very much for the clarity on that. Uh, very interesting discussion. Let us know what you think about whether you're a user of e-cigarettes or you see other people using them or members of your family are getting involved with them. Uh, let us know. You can get in contact via the usual means. We're on email and across social media as well this morning. 6.43, uh, you are watching Breakfast Morning uh, from BBC.